Everybody standing, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have anticipated this night for a long, long time. I have been, I have been so blessed with the thought, the prospect of Brother Jesse Duplantis opening God's word to us. And the timing of the Lord is such a precious thing. I told Joni this afternoon, I said, I, I don't know when I would rather have had Jesse Duplantis step on this platform than tonight. But because of the ordering of events, the purpose and the plan of God in bringing you where I know you are, in preparing you to receive that which this tremendous vessel of the Lord is ready to pour forth to you. It's just as important that you be anointed to hear as that he is anointed to speak. So let's pray right now. Would you just lay your hands on your belly? Father, I have no greater gift than the ears and the hearts of these people to give my friend. And so now I do commit them into his care under the authority of the Holy Ghost. And I pray that every ear tonight will be quickened Every heart will be prepared to receive the seed of the word of God, knowing that it is the nature of that seed to reproduce. Lord God, let divine resurrection life be birthed on the inside of us tonight by that which your servant shall speak. Let this be a time of great ease and joy as he ministers in this place. Let him feel eternally at home and free as every devil is bound and every heart is receptive to the word that shall flow from his belly tonight. In the name of your Christ, we do thank you for it. Believe that it is done and shout victory over it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is my great honor and joy to welcome to the first time, but not the last, to World Harvest Church, Jesse Duplantis. People need to learn to get loose. Lord, our God. <laughs> I already like this place. <laughs> this is a happy church. I like a happy church. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! I like a happy church. <laughs> I love so if you're here tonight and you're visiting and you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, chances are you sitting by somebody that's got it. It's very contagious. You see what it did to a Baptist? My Lord, my Lord. You may be seated if you can. And if you can't, stand up. I don't care. I make myself at home because I'm in my father's house. I enjoy the presence of the Lord. I'm not saved enough to be miserable. I've seen some miserably saved people. I told that to a man the other day. He said, I don't know what I'm doing. I said, you might as well go to hell because that's where you're going to wind up anyway. He just didn't know what to do. I said, my God, man, have you met the Jesus I know? The Jesus I know. I'm known all over the world as a man that just knows Jesus. I'm a Jesus man. Oh, I just enjoy the Lord. And what's wonderful, he enjoys me. I get up every morning, I go, hey, Jesus. He said, hi, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's just fun. He said, do you ever have any trouble? Yeah. You ever have any challenges to your faith? Yeah. But that doesn't bother me. I read the end of the book. I win. I 
play till I win, too. It's my ball, it's my bat, it's my glove. I don't play nine innings, I play till I win. If he don't want to play, I take my ball and bat and I go home. I am as serious as I can be about that. Glory to God. Well, I've heard so much about this church and everything I heard is the truth. Mike Perk is a friend of mine. He said, you got to go to Rod Parsley's church. Now, I, I first met Pastor Parsley at TBN on a Praise the Lord show. Dwight Thompson was there and Rod Parsley. I'm in the middle. And all I did was this. <laughs> they said, you got something to say? Amen. <laughs> I said, join myself. It was just such a blessing. I mean, Pastor Parsley, look at that camera. God, you know what God says. And you know, Dwight, he kind of moved that head around a little bit. You know? <laughs> I just kept looking at both of them. <laughs> I enjoy my, I just love the body of Christ. I do, I love the different flavors in the body of Christ. Oh, it's a, see, because I'm a Cajun, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Now, I, and, and I love, it, it's a culture, it's really, it is, and, you know. People say, what is a Cajun? Anything it want to be. You got to understand, when our ancestors got here, there's nothing but woods. They marry anybody, it stands still long enough. I know I'm supposed to be kind of dark-skinned and brown-eyed, and I'm very light-skinned and blue-eyed. There's somebody in the woodpile. We don't know who it is. <laughs> I have no idea. We didn't ask neither. We just didn't ask. But we just enjoy the presence of Jesus. I do. I was talking, I just finished the Kenneth Copeland Eagle Mountain Motorcycle Rally. We had about 45,000 people in the field. This big woman, about 300 pounds, come grab me. She just picked me up. I said, put me down, mama, put me down. Son, she needed a shave. She scratched my face. She needed a shave, boy. She said, I love you, brother Jesse. I said, I can tell. <laughs> God got all kinds of different people. And it's just so wonderful. I love this band. I love this choir. Let me tell you what makes it successful. Black people. If you're a pastor now, you ain't got no black people in your choir, get some. And don't never sing bringing in the sheaves again as long as you ever live. Get that out of here. <laughs> and I was watching them black people, but they just get them. I just love it. I just, you know, I was born in New Orleans and I live around black people. I, 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 I can play everything that's up here. I used to be a nightclub entertainer. I used to do that. I mean, I was a rock musician. I'm telling you, I worked on the same circuit as Led Zeppelin, Grand Funk. I mean, you got to understand something. In 1970, my hair was dark chocolate brown. It really was. <laughs> Long dark like them. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, brother. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I'm telling you, and girls would scream, ah! And young people, is your mama doing that? Your mama was screaming. And I didn't like any gospel music at all until God began to change and save people. Let me, let me show you something. Get off that piano. <laughs> Get my rings off here. I, I don't know how you say one. Hallelujah. I'm not as short as you think I am. Hang on. When I, 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 I very seldom ever do this. I just felt led of the Lord to do this. And when I heard gospel music, it used to sound like this. I didn't like it at all. I, I didn't like it. Then God began to save different types of people way back when. And all of a sudden, gospel kind of went country. It went like. Happy trails to you. And people got mad about that. They said, that's worldly. It's of the devil. We don't want that. We want. 
Then God went to Louisiana and saved three guys. And a lot of people don't know that they were born and raised up in church. That was Jerry Lee Lewis, Mickey Gilly, and Jimmy Swagger. They were there, and they introduced this kind of music. And people really got mad, said, I got honky tonk music, we want. <laughs> so God said, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. He saved the man that totally changed the complexion of gospel music. And his name was Dallas Holm. And he introduced this kind of music. And people said, no, we don't want that. We want. And God said, the black man in California did this. And people got mad. That's of the devil we want. So God said, I'm going to freak everybody out. And he saved Phil Driscoll. And Phil introduced this kind of music like he did. He went, oh. <laughs> And y'all can play with me, fellas, you want. Lovely oh. sing with a bad throat and nobody cares. People say, listen to the anointing of God. But you know, God loves. God loves. And God loves. And God loves. And God loves. God loves oh, lovely. Oh, you see, God can handle change. Can you? Uh, give the Lord a shout. Yeah. He can handle change. Praise the Lord. Now, I have never been here. And I've never had a pastor tell me this to what just Pastor Parsons just did. He said, have fun. <laughs> he don't know who he talking to. <laughs> Where's my tape guys? I got a tape guy around here. Do y'all have my track with me? You got a track? Give it to the sound man real quick. Let me just do this and put me on this handheld. You all ready, guys? All right. I'm a... Now, I hardly sing anymore. And all that, I very seldom do that. And, but, um, you know, it's because some churches, you know, they, you know, well, you know how some churches are. <laughs> and, uh, but real quick, I, and uh, I just want to do this song. I, every time I, years ago, I sang this song and all over the world, Vegas, places like that. And I always thought of it as a hymn. But it wasn't a hymn. It's never been a hymn. It, it, it became a hit all over the world. Now, you got to understand something about me. I'm, I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. My real name is Jaji Duplanty. That's true. I'm a Frenchman. I, you know, I don't look French, but you know how French people are. That's all I'm going to say about that. And, uh, and I came from a very poor family, but uh, I wasn't ashamed of that. And, you know, I'm a man I never see color. Creflo Dollar is a friend of mine. A guy asked me today, he said, oh, I said, oh, Brother Jesse, is that the Creflo Dollar black? I said, man, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask him. 
I'm sorry. I don't deal with that. You know. And, um, but I've always loved music, and I play about 11 instruments, and I did that for a living and made a lot. I've been rich. I ain't gonna lie. I have been rich. I ain't lying about it. It's the truth. I have been rich. I've been poor. Rich or better. It won't give you any happiness, but it'll sure make you feel wonderful while you're miserable. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just thought I'd tell you that. But when you work for the devil, you know, he steals everything you got. That's how he is. You know, he's, he gives you a paper success, then he burns it up in your hand. And that's just simply the truth. Well, I used to go down to where the black people lived, which was only about three blocks from my house. Because we was the poor white trash, and they was the poor black trash. <laughs> that's what, and that's when America was going through all that prejudice junk and all that kind of, you know, stuff like that. And <laughs> I used to know an old black gentleman, and I'd go over there, and he, he'd take, in those days, you'd get out on the porch, and he'd play the guitar. Now, you got to understand, I was five or six years old. And uh, I'd go, and I'd just stick my head between that, you know, that, that, that porch looking, and he'd start playing the guitar. And here I am, a little five, six-year-old white boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that black lady was just so precious. She said, Miss Duplan, you shows Jesse ain't black. And I used to ask him, I said, uh, I said, Mr. George, I said, uh, don't you supposed to have six strings on that guitar? He said, all you need is one. Do, 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 do. He just cracked that guitar. Well, New Orleans is known as the city of blues and things, and some of the greatest musicians in the world came out of the city of New Orleans. If you don't mind, I just felt a little Lord to sing this, and, and uh, if you like it, they tell Pastor Foster. If you don't, then keep your comments to yourself. And, uh, <laughs> And every time I sang this song, I thought about God when I was a heathen from hell. Well, Kathy bought me a tape of this person that I think is the greatest musician and the greatest composer in, my, in this generation ever, in my opinion. So Kathy gave me, because we ride motorcycles, you know. We, I, I'm a motorcycle man. I love, now, I don't look like this when I ride a motorcycle. Now, I got Levi's on. I got me a hat with a ponytail on it that long. <laughs> got to look the part, you know. Give me some of them fake tattoos. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and you're going to know this song. Because everybody's heard this song. Because it talks about the creation of God. It should have been him. Well, I think he's the greatest musician. He's no longer here on the earth. And I pray to God he's in heaven. And I pray that the Lord let me live next door to him forever. So I want to sing this song. And, and, um, and in fact, God gave me a tape. And we've stopped for gas, and Kenneth and Gloria Copeland was with us. And I said, Gloria and Kenneth, do you like this particular artist? And they said, yeah, I've heard him before. I said, listen to this tape, see what you think. So anyways, they did, and we stopped for gas the next time, and Gloria gets off. She says, you know how Gloria, she's such a sweetheart. She says, you know, Jesse, you ought to, you ought to sing that one of the Believers Convention. I said, that's God. That's got to be God. When Gloria says it, it's God. Just ask Kenneth, he'll tell you, it's God. And every other man that knows his wife will tell you it's God. So I sang this, and so if uh, I hope you enjoy it, and I want you to listen to it, and you're gonna know who this person is. And then when I come to his part, I'll try to sound a little bit like him. So Maestro, go ahead, kick it. Let me hear it. That's not it. <laughs> I see trees of green, red roses too. I watch the moon for me and you. And I say to myself, what a wonderful world. Now, if the satchel was here, he'd do it like this. Glasses, glasses, blue, glasses, white. God bless it, they don't let me tell you something, honey. Dark sacred night. Oh, and I said to myself, yes, I do, I do, I do. What a wonderful world. <laughs> Thank you. the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, also on the faces, 
people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, Well, how do you do? They really say, Well, oh, mama, let me tell you something, mama. Lord, I love you. Yes, I do. I hear babies cry. Lord, I watch them grow. They learn much more, Lord, than I ever knew. And I say to myself, what a wonderful world. I've learned of myself. What a wonderful world. Now I want everybody to sing with me. Follow the bouncing ball. Ready? Come on. The colors of the rainbow. So pretty in the sky. Also on the faces. People going by. Lousy friends shaking hands. Saying, well, how do you do? Babies cry, Lord, I watch them grow. They learn much more, more this than I ever know. But Lord, I, I said of myself, yes, I could. What a wonderful world. What a wonderful world. Give the Lord a shout. And I hope the Satchmo is saved. I want to live next door to him. So I'll go over there and say, hello, Lord. <laughs> you know, that should have been a hymn. I mean, if you think of the words of that song, that should have been a hymn. And I honestly believe in my opinion, I mean, that the reason why it went worldwide because it was talking about God's creation. Now, some people don't believe this, but I wrote a very popular book called Close Encounters of the God Kind. Went to heaven for five hours and 15 minutes. Don't try to push it. Don't try to make money on that kind of thing. But the publishers told me that I'm the first spirit-filled author ever for crossover in the secular market of hardcover edition. This book is in 1,000 Walden bookstores across America and the world. Sam's Wholesale is negotiating for 200,000 copies to put in the Sam's, things of that nature. And uh, didn't really want to do that with the Spirit of God told me to. I said, Lord, I don't want to join the ranks of the flake. He said, Jesse, you've been crazy since you were born, boy. <laughs> you just tell people, and how many people have read that book? Hold your hand up. Then they just shake you, just shake you. There's some things in there that are strong, man. but to know Jesus is to love him. I've had people ask me on television, you know, well, how have you changed since that has happened to you? I said, I haven't changed. That did not increase my faith. What it did was increase my longing for Jesus to come. I mean, Columbus nice, but heaven better. It really is. And if you don't know Jesus tonight, you can meet him. Because he's a good friend. He's a blessing. He truly loves you. He does. He just does. He loves us so much. But to know him is to know him in his word. To walk in his word. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of St. John, chapter 14. That's in the New Testament for you people that never read the Bible. You'd be surprised how many people don't read the Bible. See, I was raised Catholic. I mean, and now the Catholics read the Bible. They have Bible studies, charismatic movement. Well, I mean, God moves. But when I was growing up, they told you, don't read the Bible, you'll go crazy. Was any, has any Catholic person been here know what I'm talking about? So all I ever remembered in, in, in my church days as a Catholic was a nomine patria fili or spiritu santo which meant it's time mama it's over let's go home 
How many of you have been Catholic at least once? Hold your hand up. Do you remember this? Oh, magnum mysterium, it taught me rubble a sacramentum. It taught me rubble a sacramentum. Utoni malia fede de doce nom natum. How many of y'all remember? Look at the Protestants. Wonder what he said. <laughs> we were Catholic. That's all we knew. That was it. Our Father and Hail Mary. I mean, and that's not, I'm not critical of that prayer because I love the Catholic prayer. In fact, I'm the only minister in the state of Louisiana to be asked by the Archdiocese of the Roman Catholic Church to preach in their churches. Isn't that a blessing of God? Isn't that a blessing? That's a miracle of God. And I asked him when I went, I went and preached at a Nunciola Catholic Church. And the priest said, no, nah, I'll do the mass, take care of everything. And then when it comes time for the message, you give it. I said, well, is there any other instruction? He said, please don't touch the altar. It's holy. I said, okay, I won't touch the altar. Well, bless God, you get excited sometimes. You understand? You can't help it. You know, it just kind of the Holy Ghost come up on you, up on you. You know, when they slam you. And I'm just preaching and they're just looking at me. The Jesuits are doing this. My God. And I walked behind that altar. I'm not supposed to. I just walk a lot when I preach. I went behind the altar and they went, oh, oh, Lord. And I went, glory. And I slapped that altar and they went, whoa, he hit the altar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, start praying for people. Over 100 people went out in the Holy Ghost. They called three ambulances. Oh, 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 oh. They didn't know what was going on. God was moving. And the father, the pastor of the church, he said, I want you to pray for me. I said, he said, but I, I don't want to fall down. I said, why? He said, the Jesuits are here. We don't want to fall down when the Jesuits are here. Isn't that something? That's a true story. God coming to town. This Jesus. So let's start reading St. John chapter 14. I want to deal tonight with the character of Jesus. What time is it? It's still dark. We got time. I don't preach long, I just preach a little slow sometimes. It takes a while to get it out. St. <laughs> John chapter 14. Now, it's very hard for me to preach in front of Rod Parsley because I've said this for many, many, many years that I've seen his ministry. I've said it all over. I said, that Rod Parsley and T.D. Jakes will make Jesus get off his throne and say, I can't stand it no more. I got to go down and get that, boys. I got to go down and get him. I like TDJ. Get ready, get ready, get, get, get ready. And like him, he goes, yeah, you know. And he starts with them legs. I tell you, woo, I tell you. You know, like he got a rash or something. I don't know what the problem is. Gee, oh, Lord. I'm thinking, well, maybe he need a healing or something. I don't know. He's heard me say it. I just love his ministry. And the eloquency of Rod Parsley, it's amazing. I mean, he just preaching. My God, I'm going, whew. Wow. Glory to God. I've been watching him lately, boy, on television, and he go, I think he's blowing on people. I like that blowing stuff, man. I was with Benny Hinn. I said, blow on him, Benny. Blow on him. And he just thought, I like stuff like that. I like that. I like radicalism. I like it. I want God to do whatever he wants to do. The other day, I was preaching at a Bible college, and this theologian said, I don't believe in that. I said, let me tell you something. You got cancer. It don't make no difference. Blow on you. Let him spit in your face. <laughs> Who cares? I mean, get your good glow. Pow! Just spit. It don't make no difference. I said, as long as you get healed. Now, if you spit in my face and I don't get healed, are we going to talk? <laughs> We're going to talk. We're going to have some conversation. But if I get healed, spit to your heart's desire. I believe in that. Because God works with personality. He works. When you got saved, he changed your spirit. He didn't change your personality. If you was dull for the devil, chances are you dull for God. It's your personality. You got to kick it up a little bit. But God loves a variety of people. So I enjoy it. I didn't say I got to agree with everything goes on, but bless God, I can enjoy it. People say, why did he do that? I don't know. Ask them. Jesus did some crazy stuff. I mean, he's spitting the man, he's spitting mud. <laughs> First thing, that's kind of gross to even do that, you know. The blind man say, what, what's he doing? He say, you, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. What's that on my eyes? Don't ask. Just take it. There are a lot of things about the Lord. 
and he's wonderful. St. John chapter 14, are you there yet? I want to start reading with verse 1. Notice the words are red. Every time Jesus talks, words get hot. Look at that. Now, I believe this verse. Some people quote it. But I live this verse. It, Jesus said in St. John 14, verse 1, He says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? That's Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah. Believe also in me. And I see red. How many of y'all believe the red parts? Okay. Let not your heart be troubled. I've been criticized because of my smile. There are two parts of my body known all over the world, my hair and my teeth. I mean, and you know, I mean, I tried sad. I didn't like it. I tried sick. That was even worse. I tried broke, and I got away from that as fast as I could. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Well, bless God, brother Jesse, do you ever have trouble? Well, yeah, the Bible said in this world you shall have tribulation. But be a good cheer, not because of the trouble, for he has overcome the world. And Ephesians 5, 1 says, be ye therefore imitators of God. So if he's an overcomer, so are you. You got to understand something about the devil. He's the oldest loser you know. The boy is an old devil. You can wear him out. He'll get tired and leave you alone for a while. Jesus didn't, he didn't beat his brains out in the wilderness. And the Bible said he left him for a season. That's three months. He said, man, I, I, I got to go home and rest myself. I mean, this Jesus Nazareth boy just beat my brains out. You know, let me tell you something about the devil. He's old. I honestly believe he has Alzheimer's myself. And I'm telling you something, if you don't say nothing, he'll forget what to do. He'll forget who you stand by the words of your mouth. He don't remember. He don't know. He's not a faith devil. He's a flesh devil. I mean, he's spiritually dead. You're spiritually alive. You want me to prove it to you? Real quick before I get into this message, this is just a little hors d'oeuvre. You know, a little hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> by the time he saw Jesus, he's so old and so decrepit, bless God, he don't even really know who he is. He says, he, he didn't say that, but that, you know. He said, if thou be the son of God. He don't know. Why? The anointing has been stripped from him. He's losing intelligence even as I speak. He said, listen, let me show you something. Let me show you how fleshy he is. He said, listen, if thou be the son of God. Watch this. He says, do something. Turn that stone into bread. He asked Jesus to do something he could see. Why? Because he's not a faith devil, he's a flesh devil. He said, if he can turn that rock into, into bread, he got to be the man. Now, Jesus could have turned the whole mountain into a loaf of bread with a log of butter running down the middle of it. That's not the issue. What did Jesus say? No. He said, I ain't working. Everything he asked Jesus to do, was something he could see. Why? Because he's not a faith devil. He's a flesh devil. But you are a spirit living being. So the best thing to do when the devil comes, don't say nothing. He just look at you like an old man. You ever seen old people just look at you? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't say nothing. He'll go. And you can beat him so bad you wear him out. He said, I, I, I gotta go rest myself. And he'll leave you alone for a while. Now, he's going to come back, you know, because he's stupid. He has no other choice, you know. He's lost anyway. See, so you have to understand his makeup. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. That means he can't use anything that's not common to you. Now, if he can't use anything that's not common to you, so you'd be kind of crazy to fall for his trap if you already know what he's going to do. Just say, no. You, know, you make it sound so easy. It is easy. It's like one man told me, he said, you know, brother, I get diabetes. My diabetes runs in our family. I said, it does. I just listened to him. My God. No devil's so stupid, you know, he, he had forgot to give it to him. He went, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I came back to that church eight months later. The guy had diabetes. He said, I want you to pray for me, brother Jesse. I said, why? He said, well, I got diabetes. I said, why? Why should I pray for you? Your faith worked. Why, why do we want to break this faith that's in your life? You didn't have it when I was here last time. You believe God for it. You believe the devil for it. You got it. Enjoy it. Boy, your faith works. He said, but I don't, I don't want it to work like that. I said, neither does God. I said, you're not genetically linked up with the devil. You're not genetically linked up with your family. 
If you're born again, you're genetically linked up with the Holy One of Israel. Yeah, but I tried that and it didn't work. You don't try to do anything. I didn't try to come to Columbus. I did. If you go to marry somebody, Pastor Parson, and you say, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? And he says, I'll try. You tell that boy, go sit down, boy. You got to commit to this. Do you understand? I want to get this foundation of what I want to say here. You got to understand something about the devil. If you shut up, he don't know what to do. If you remember anything I say tonight, remember this. If you learn to doubt your doubts, you won't be a doubter no more because your doubts have been doubted because you've learned to doubt your doubts. <laughs> Bible said all things are possible to them that believe. Is that correct? Now the devil said that's not true. So when the devil throws doubt in your mind, said, I doubt that. And he'll say, you can't doubt that. That's doubt. I doubt your doubt. What do you mean you doubt? I doubt your doubt. I doubt it. Devil, you can't doubt. I doubt your doubt. Now that's going to confuse the devil because he's the author of confusion. And he won't know what to do there. He'll freak out. So you start talking to other devils. You see this guy over here, I put doubt in his head and he's doubting it. How can he doubt doubt? Man, I don't know how he's doubting a doubt, but he's doubting a doubt. You mean to tell me you put doubt in his head? I put doubt in his head and he doubted the doubt. And the devil will go, I doubt it myself. I, I, I don't know what to do. Let me slow it down. If you learn to doubt your doubts, you won't be a doubter no more because your doubts have been doubted because you've learned to doubt your doubts. You want scripture? Jesus coming out of a boat and a man full of demons going to scare Jesus. And the Lord said, I doubt that. <laughs> Blew the socks off them devils. The devils are stupid. They looked at him. See, when they realize that who has authority, when they realize that you know what to do, they'll ask you what to do. They were all confused. And they said, uh, I can't go in them hogs over there. <laughs> and Jesus said, yeah, I'm Jewish. I ain't much on pork. bit the dust. Now if Gentiles would have been there, we'd have went barbecue, pork chop, ribs, how, ham, yeah! This morning I was eating, <laughs> eating breakfast with Kenneth Copeland, we was eating some bacon. Listen, I'm finished with this low-fat trash, you understand? I have had it with this low-fat trash. You ever notice everybody eating low-fat fat? The fat done got low. It's low, boy. I've had it with this. I want to eat like my grandma and them ate. They ate eggs fried in bacon grease, cheese, butter, biscuits, syrup. And you couldn't kill them. We tried to kill them. They couldn't kill them. Then we start eating all this healthy trash. Tree bark, muse licks. We don't even know what it is, like horse meal. Broccoli. Had people having heart trouble at 40 years old. Wonder why? Because that broccoli getting caught in your arteries, that's the problem. I'm going back to eggs, ham, butter. Well, supposing you die, I'll die smiling. Who wants to be dead looking healthy? Boy, he looked good. No, he's dead. St. John chapter 14. I got to hurry up, boy. They told me about this church. They said you can preach to you. Man, it, I, don't shout too much. You, you pull it out of me here. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now notice something. Jesus puts verse 2 in there. Don't even make any sense. Don't know why he threw it in there. Just did it. He's talking about let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, Yahweh, Elohim, Jehovah. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. Now why did he put that in there? He wasn't even talking about that. His mind just grasped that thought. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he say, in my father's house are many shacks. You cannot impress God with your wealth on your best day. On your best day, you can't impress God with any of your wealth. I mean, he's got gold streets. You got asphalt streets with holes in them this big. It ain't gonna happen. You know, I own a jet. I own my own jet. You know, God don't even fly in that piece of trash. Why? It's too slow. He moves by the speed of thought. And you know, the Lord told me to go to Wichita. I, you know what I just flew here in, Pastor? A brand new Citation 10. I, I leased it today. The Lord said, go fly that plane. I said, God, you know how much that plane costs? He said, yeah, I know how much it costs. He said, I ain't asking you to buy it. I'm just asking you if you can receive it. I said, it's $16 million. Ba -ba! He said, big deal. <laughs> so what? 
He said, I want you to get in it and fly the thing. I want you to feel it. I said, Lord, I'm satisfied, God. He said, I'm not. He said, I'm not. I'm the God of too much. When will you quit making excuses for the blessings that I have bestowed upon you? You should be beyond that. Oh, glory to God. So I said, okay. I told my chief pilot, get that jet. The Lord said, have you ever bought a new car? I said, yeah. Have you ever built a new house? I said, yeah. He said, why can't you buy a new plane? 16 million bucks. If it's a Gulf Stream, depends on what you want. G2, G3, G4, G5 is about 35 million. Why does Exxon have the money to do it? Didn't God tell us to be a blessing to all families and nations of the earth? Didn't he say that? How are you going to do that? Bless God. When you believe in God for somebody to marry your daughter so you ain't got to support her no more. Everybody wants the blessings of Abraham, but nobody wants the responsibility of Abraham. What's the responsibility? To be a blessing to all families and nations of the earth. You know, we could all shut down and play golf. I can't play golf. I'd go to hell playing golf. That's a, that thing, I'd, whew, that's a rebellious game. I'd rather ride a motorcycle. But what I'm saying is, if we got to go to the world, my God, man, you can't go broke. And it's not just so you can buy things. That's not the issue. Because all the things you buy, you're going to leave them here. He said, in my father's house, so many mansions, they were not so I would have told you. I can go to prepare a place for you. Notice something. Why was he a carpenter on the earth? Because he's a carpenter in heaven. He builds nice places. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, I'm going to say something, and I want all of you to judge. If you don't believe this, kick it out, throw it away, and don't let it be space in your mind. I went before the Lord. I am building a $7 million complex right now, even as I speak, and I'm paying cash for it. You understand? Cash. Cash. I've had three bank presidents come to me and say, Reverend, we want to give you a letter of credit. I said, I already got a letter to the Philippians. I got a letter already. Now, they don't understand that. They go, Philippians. They think that's some bank in New York. You know, they don't know. How the Lord told me, he said, you want, to believe, you want to pay cash? I said, yeah. I said, he said, fine, we'll handle that. And the first phase is $1.2 million. It's paid for. The second phase is about ready to be, when the slab's going to start in about four weeks, Kathy. That's about 1.6 to 1.8. I don't know. That's already paid for. This is the kind of God we serve. He ain't broke. He's El Shaddai. He ain't El Chipo. You understand? I mean, he's got something here. This is how God is. And it's the most amazing thing to me. I said, Lord, what do you want? He said, what can you believe for? Do you believe I'm coming in your lifetime? I said, yes. He said, well, then you better get your faith up and get this world touched. He said, if you are holding me back. He said, heaven holds Jesus back till all things will be restored. That's the book of Acts. God is looking to restore things to you. But if he, he can't give it to you if you can't receive it. I'm not talking about greed. They had greed in the 80s. It was on Wall Street and it was in ministry. Oh, yeah. Got enough sense to know that and get both of them busted out. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So God's not interested in greed. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. Now watch this. So I can't build a dog house, Pastor Paul. If I do, the dog going to get wet. I'd rather buy a building. You ain't got to fight all the county officials and all the stuff you got to go through. I mean, I don't know nothing. My contractor said, what size toilets you want, Reverend? I said, well, sit on one, man. If it fits, buy the thing. I don't know. I, have, I, don't, I didn't know they made different size toilets. How many of y'all didn't know they made different size toilets? See? I said, I don't, I don't want to know about doorknobs. Just stick one on there, man. So I went before the Lord in my study. In my own study, in my home. I said, Lord, I want to talk to you. Come here. Come here. I said, listen. This is just between us. I said, you know, I can believe for anything you want me to believe for. That's not the issue. I said, but Lord, I really believe you're coming in my lifetime. He said, you really believe that? I said, I do. Because I know how much you love me. <laughs> and I know you want to be around me. He said, yeah. I said, so Lord... I really believe it's very close. He said, it's very close. Then I said, then why do you, then why do you want to build the buildings? I mean, let's just get out of here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why build the buildings if he's coming back in your life? I mean, why fight the hassle? He said, well, Jesse, you're coming back. I said, what? He said, Jesse, you're just going to eat dinner. I said, what? He said, Jesse, you're just going to eat dinner. You're coming back. He said, do you think I'm going to lose all my properties 
during the tribulation? To tell you the truth, I could have cared less. I just want to go to heaven and get out of here, man. I want to go to heaven before April the 15th. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> About ready to pay the IRS and say, catch me if you can. <laughs> he said, you coming back? He said, you're just gone. Now some, I don't know if you're pre-trip, post-trip, whatever, mid-trip. You know, I'm going in the rapture. If you, if you want to stay here, enjoy yourself. Now watch this. This is where I believe in. You leave it where you want. He said, well, you're coming back. He said, you got to rule and reign with me for 1,000 years, Jesse. He said, you think I'm going to lose all my properties? And I'm thinking, that's kind of confused me. He said, get your lawyer on the phone. I said, what? Call your lawyer. I said, what for? Just call your lawyer. So I called him. I said, Jules. He said, hey, Jess, what's going on? I said, listen, um, I'm asking him, what do you want me to ask him? He said, ask him, when can the government take their proper, your property? I said, when can the government come in and take my property? He said, what are you asking about? I said, if, if, if I just disappear, if I'm, if I'm declared missing. He said, well, if you're declared missing, you cannot be legally declared dead until seven years. I said, what? He said, well, if you're missing, he said, everything is frozen in your estate. We cannot declare you legally dead until you've been missing seven years. He said, then we can disperse with your assets and things. I said, seven years. He said, yes. And the Lord said, you'll be back. <laughs> judge it. Just judge it for yourself. Now think about that. Do you think he's going to lose this church during the tribulation? Do you know how much people have given here to bless this place? The devil ain't that smart, ladies and gentlemen. You'll be back when the devil's about ready to grab it. And you've been declared missing for seven years. Pastor Foster will walk through the church and go... I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Pray about that. Study that out. Meditate on it. You still got 1,000 years to rule and reign with the Lord on this earth. You're going to need these buildings. You're going to need them. Because the Bible says that Jesus is going to have to rule with an iron hand. That means with the devil locked up in the bottom of his pit, people are still going to get out of line. God said, if you don't go to Jerusalem once a year, I'll cut your rain off. That means you'll get drought. This is during the 1,000-year millennial kingdom. He said, you coming back, Jess? You coming back? He said, so build the buildings. I said, okay, I just never thought about it. I just never thought of it like that. He said, Jesse, I'm not a loser on anything. And I'm a lot smarter than the devil. I've taught him everything he knows. But I never taught him everything I know. I like that. Now, you pray about that. If you don't like it, kick it out. Now, who's going to take care of the place while we're gone? The people that miss this thing. They're going to know where you went. So either you can come eat dinner with us or you can cut grass. <laughs> pray about it. <laughs> That's all I have to do, pray about it. You don't like it, kick it out. But Jesse going out on the first load. And I made up my mind. I've been there. I have been there, ladies and gentlemen. I've walked with very few men of them walked. I'm telling you something. There is such an urgency of what's going on up there. Jesus is coming. He's coming. Watch this. And if I go and prepare a place for you, verse 3, I will come again. That's the return of the Lord. And receive you unto myself. That's the reception of the Lord. That where I am, there you may be also. That's the reunion. That's the return, the reception, and the reunion. That's a homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological sermon right there. A good Baptist can preach that. Return, reception, reunion. That's how Baptists preach. For God so loved the world, the cause of salvation, that he gave his only begotten son, the cost of salvation. And whosoever believeth in him, the condition of salvation, should not perish but have everlasting life. The consequence, when you understand the cause and the cost and the condition and the consequence, you understand salvation. That's Baptist preaching. That's homiletics. I like that kind of stuff. Daniel was a man of excellent spirit because he was a man of purpose. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of perception, but he was a man of power. When you understand the new birth, it's miraculous. It's mandatory. It's mysterious, but it's marvelous. You can get into M's and C's and B's and A's 
and do it all homiletically, it comes out wonderful. But does it change anybody? Ah, that's the key to it. Verse 4. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And I want to deal tonight with the character of Jesus for just a few minutes. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. I am the truth. If Jesus is the truth, you cannot be deceived. Write that down. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. If Jesus is the truth, you cannot be deceived. If Jesus is the life, if he is what he says he is, then the devil can't kill you. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. If Jesus is the truth, you cannot be deceived. If Jesus is the life, then the devil can't kill you. Now I want you to get your thinking caps on. Let's deal with these three facets of the character of Jesus. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. Every man has a purpose and a place and a meaning. We're not wandering around here aimlessly. Jesus is the way. You got to understand, I was a Catholic boy, but they never let me talk to God. I went from a Catholic to a Baptist. Now that's culture shock. You understand, that's culture shock. I never heard of training union. We didn't have Sunday school. We had catechism, you understand? We didn't know anything about that kind of stuff. They said, come forward and make a public profession of your faith. I had never heard of the word saved. Would you like to get saved? From what? Those terminologies were not, were not in our circle. We didn't know any of that kind of stuff, you understand? But if Jesus is the way, I can't get lost. But then my mother and father got filled with the Holy Ghost. We went from a Catholic to a Baptist to a Pentecostal. Now that will shock you. Because the first time I ever saw a Pentecostal, I saw a woman with hair about this high. Ugly woman. I'm talking... Gag a maggot ugly, you understand? They didn't believe in makeup. They were some ugly people. Everything was a sin. Sin, sin, and it's sin. They thought, listen, they preached that sleeveless dresses was a sin. My God, man, if an armpit turns you on, you need deliverance. Do you understand that? You need a devil cast out of you, boy. I ain't never seen, I never got turned on looking at somebody's armpit. It's an armpit. The man could wear the top fashion of the day, but the woman had to have a dollar sack dress on with hair on her legs so she could be holy. The only thing that church could do was eat, and did they eat? I'm talking eat. You throw a, I mean, they eat pizza like a frisbee. Just throw it at them. How? They just eat them. They said a woman couldn't wear a bathing suit to go swimming. You had to wear a dress. What does a dress do when you get in water? It praises God. That's insane. I said, Dad, let's go back to the other church. These people are crazy. I didn't believe in any of that. And this crazy woman, you know, they had them jerks. Yeah. Go, go. Jeez, jeez, I thought, man, they need some healing over here. This is some spastic people. I didn't know anything about that kind of stuff. It was wild to me. My grandmother got saved. She said, Jesse, you need to marry one of the girls in the church. I said, no, I'm going amongst the Philistines, me. I want me some sleaze in Delilah. Just give me a sleaze in Delilah. I was full of the devil. I didn't understand any of that. You know why? Because Jesus wasn't my way. What are you saying? I didn't understand him in any way, shape, or form. The way is not a code of rules or laws or theology. It's not a track marked out on a chart, but it's the very road itself. Jesus is the road. See, but all he ever gave me was a code of rules, laws, and theology. I want to know God. Give me a chance to talk to God. But the Catholic wouldn't let me talk to God. You had to talk to the priest. I got to the Baptist, bless God, and they said, you can make a public profession of your faith, sign your name, and bless God, that's it, Jack, and it's over. When I got to the Pentecostal, you're not worthy, you low-down, dirty dog piece of trash from hell. Ooh. And they all thought God was deaf. And they'd pray, Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, Lord. And I could see God going, what? 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 Now we laugh at that, but people went through that for years under bondage. 
But my Bible says whom the Son has set free is free indeed. That's what he said. That's what he means. That's what we walk in. Not freedom to sin. Why would you want to sin? I don't understand people backsliding and blows me away. What in hell do you want? Does that shock you? What does hell have to offer that is so great that you're going to leave the glory of God? Do you understand? First time I ever heard the word born again freaked me out. Statement, would you like to be born again? I said, I was lucky I was born once. We didn't understand these terminologies because we didn't understand Jesus as a way. We didn't, we didn't understand Jesus as a person. What we understood was religion as a corporate body call it church, the mother church. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. So the way is not a code of rules, laws, or theology. No. It's him himself. All I ever wanted in my life was a God that I could talk to. Just give me a God that I can talk to. Hey, Jesus, what, Jesse? Hello. I want to talk to God. I've learned I have a, I'm beyond relationship with God. I have a fellowship with God. Oh, man. I ride motorcycles. I asked the Lord, you want to ride with me? That sounds crazy, doesn't it? I said, get on the back of this bike. I'll take you all over New Orleans. <laughs> Boy, I'm driving down. I said, lean with me, Lord. Watch this. <laughs> Boy. He said, you enjoy this, don't you? I said, yeah, Lord. I said, I love, I just thank you for this Harley. I thank you for this gold wing. I, I, got, I like motorcycles. One man got off and said, how much you pay for that motorcycle? I said, just enough to get it. <laughs> Good Lord, man. Uh, My God, I realized that. He, I said, why are you riding with me, Lord? He said, I want to share your interest. That's wonderful that the Lord would share your interest. I said, thank you, Dean. He said, you're welcome. Watch where you're going. Watch it, watch it. I said, okay, I got it. Mm. I was coming home. There's a Burger King on, as you turn left on Ormond Boulevard where I live. I pulled over in that, in that Burger King. I saw this weird looking guy getting out there. And I went, hey, you, come here. He said, you talking to me? I said, yeah, I'm talking to you. He said, what you want? So I'm going to buy you a hamburger. Malt if you want. French fries, anything you want. Maybe i just buy you something. He said, I ain't stupid. I'll take it. I went in there and got him a double meat whopper with cheese, a large fry, a Coke, and a, one of them uh, uh, milkshakes, what do you call it? He said, what's your name? I told him my name. He told me his name. He said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I just, you know, I said, I do a lot of different things. I started telling him about God. He said, God? And man, he wasn't halfway through that double meat whopper and tears were swelling up in his eyes. The Lord said, you got him, you got him. I said, yeah, I know I got him. 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 I'm still talking to him. I'm still feeding him. You want another hamburger? I don't care, son. Give me I'm another hamburger. I'm going to get this boy saved over a Burger King sandwich. I got him saved over a double meat whopper with cheese. Tears cry. He said, man, I, I, I didn't know. He said, I've been running from God. My, my grandma got me today, didn't she? I said, it's wonderful to know Jesus, mister. He's the way. He's life. This ain't religion, man. This is reality. I said, this is Jesus. Hello, Jesus. Hey, Jesse. This is personal. This is high, touching, reaching out. He got born again. Lord of God. I got back on that motorcycle, and the Lord said, Jesse. I said, what? He said, I didn't ask you to do that. I said, I know. He said, why did you do it? I said, I want to share your interest. I want to share your interest. I want to share... For you love the world. If you love the world, Lord, I can get you the world. I'll get it through people seeing Jesus in me. The only Jesus that people ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. There's always an unseen audience. I mean, my God, with Silas bleeding and Paul bleeding, Paul said, Sing, Silas. Sing. My God, man, we're hurting like man to beat the fire out of us. Sing, Silas. Sing, sing, Silas. Okay, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. The point to the chapter was the prisoners heard them. 
They wasn't saying, don't know what we're going to do. Oh, gloom and despair and agony on me. Whoa. Deep and dark depression, excessive misery. I believe he haw got that song from some Pentecostal church somewhere. People beat up, busted, stomped, and kicked all the time. We know we have an adversary, but he said, resist him. He didn't say, assist him. Man wanted to tell me something bad about a preacher on television the other day. He said, boy, did you hear about that? I said, is it bad? He said, yeah. I said, well, evidently you must have him on your mind, so let's pray for him. He goes, uh, 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 uh. I said, I can tell you that you're trying to, you got stammering lips, so let me pray for him. I don't have to understand everything the person's doing. It's none of my business anyway. That's God and him. Why? Jesus is the way. See, to the Jews, he gave a law. He said, you do this or you die. But to me and you, he gave a way embodied in an actual personality called the Holy Spirit. And if Jesus is the way, you cannot get lost. Let's deal with the second point. If Jesus is the truth, you cannot be deceived. I want to deal with that. You cannot. Jesus is truth, not witness to truth or I teach you truth. He is the word of God. The Lord gave me a statement about him. He is the articulate expression of the thought of God. The heart of God is the Father. The face of God is the Son, Jesus. But the voice of God is the Holy Ghost. But the hand of God is the church. The Lord told me this this morning. He said, what are we going to do today? I said, what? He said, what are we going to do today, Jesse? I said, man, you don't know what you're going to do today? He said, well, you my hands. You're my feet, you're my ears, you're my mouth, you're my eyes. What are we going to do today? <laughs> I said, come on, Jesus, I'll show you what to do. Come on. <laughs> yes. But you see, we've been taught, we've been suppressed for centuries that you're not this, you're not that. You're everything he said, whether you feel it or not. I am the head of my house. I didn't say I was the boss, I said I was the head. <laughs> women are controlling the world. I've been controlled by two women all my life. That's my wife and my daughter. I do whatever they say. I notice most men, you ever see men go to the mall with their wives? They don't do, they just follow their wives. <laughs> their wives stop, they stop. You know what I'm saying? She take a step, he take a step. They just follow her. They don't know what to do. Stop right there, Nathan. Did she make a step? <laughs> Children know it. Hey, Daddy, can I go over to Harry's house today? That blank look comes upon that man. He goes, oh, ask your mom. <laughs> you go eat Christmas dinner. You never go to Grandpa's house. You never go to Daddy's house. You go to Mama's house. You go to Grandma's house. Why? Daddy don't have a house. Daddy got a mortgage note. He got a house. Daddy got a garbage can. That's it. Take this garbage can to the road. Yes, dear. I'll take my garbage can to the road. If Jesus is the truth, you cannot be deceived. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I have flown, oh God, I don't know how many millions of miles. I've been in 972 churches, completely different churches, not counting repeats. I fly a lot. I've been down in three airplane crashes. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, Baptists are speaking tongues just like that. They don't have no problem. You ain't nobody tearing for the Holy Ghost when a plane going down. I'd like to be flying and the captain comes on and says, get ready for heavy flame and smoke. We are going down. How'd you like to see a, a co-captain run down the aisle? And people are freaking out. Yeah. And I, the devil, I confused him. I went, wow, I'm going to heaven in a few minutes. And you can see the devil going, he's, he's liking this. <laughs> oh, man, you find out what you really have. What's in you? Plane filling up with smoke, people screaming and hollering. I said, let's find out what comes out of people's mouths. Uh -huh. I never heard Buddha. Oh, Buddha. <laughs> I never heard nobody say, Mohammed. <laughs> hey, Mo. 
Harley. I never heard him say, Harry, Krishna. Uh, but I've heard them all say, Jesus! Jesus! Yes! Why? Because Buddha's dead, Harry's dead, Muhammad's dead, but Jesus is alive and doing well because he's the way and he is the truth. He's the truth, the truth, the truth, Lord of God. I've been down in them things, man. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll sit next to one of them Bangladesh people. You know, with them tiles on the head. <laughs> Buddy, we lost an engine. Boom, boom, she blowed. Boom, we went down. You could see they're coming down to try to get down to something. Emergency, emergency. I never heard him talk to any other. I went, Lord Jesus. He said, I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. I said, what's the name of your God? I, I, I forgot. Yours. You seem to know yours. I said, man, you better thank God you're with me on this plane. He got a little closer to me. I said, don't get too close to me now, son. Going down. Flying over an airport. And there's the ambulance. Do, do, do. And they're waiting for you. You in trouble. They phone that runway. <laughs> oh, but Jesse, you weren't afraid? Huh? Why? in heaven. I've had Jesus in my life. Now, I don't want to go sliding down the road, sliding down the runway looking like a hamburger meat. <laughs> Nobody want to do that. That's not the issue. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, the devil tried to do this. They let it happen with my wife. We're flying to Honolulu. Remember that, Kathy? Going to Hawaii. A Delta co-captain took off out the cockpit and ran straight down. They couldn't put the flaps down. We are going down. A lady starts crying. Miss Man said, we're going to crash, we're going to crash, we're going to crash. <laughs> I said, don't worry about it. I said, Kathy, are you scared? She said, not a bit. I said, well, bless God. I said, don't worry about it. I said, I've been down in three of these plane crashes. That's why it's happening, because you on this plane. Remember that? <laughs> no! I said, the devil knows me. I'm on this plane. He's trying to stop my meeting in Hawaii. I said, well, I'll bind him. Brother, unbuckle that seat book and got up and said, I bind you, you devil from hell. I command you to get your hands off this glory. Get your hand off this plane. That captain says, we're going off the runway. I'm going to burn the tires off the rims. I, the flaps can't come down. We can't slow down. We've got to hit it. Brother, when that plane, that was an L-1011, when that L-1011 touched that runway, boom, the flaps came down. <laughs> I told them all, you better go to church. Oh, we're going to church. What were people going? Oh, we're going to church. Hey. I went to everybody, got off that plane, and I walked up to that cockpit. I said, excuse me, sir. Boy, I mean, he come out soaking wet. I said, we was in trouble. He said, he don't want to tell you, you know. I said, I was a million mile flyer. He said, we was in trouble. I said, I don't tell you something. I prayed and the angels of God slapped them flaps down. He said, well, mister, I don't know what happened. We couldn't get them down. But I'll tell you something, knocked them down. He said, I had my hand on the flap. And he went, pow, popped out of my hand. What happened is God said, angels said, Jesse's on that plane. Jesse's on that plane. Wham, Jesse's on that plane. Jesse ain't finished yet. His destiny is not over. No, no. You won't quit till your destiny's over. Why? Because he is the truth. He's the truth. Truth lies between way and life. Without truth, there's no knowing. His creation's definition or final cause is Jesus. <laughs> I love all people. I don't mean to be sound critical, but I'll tell you what, when, when the rubber meets the road, like they say, when you're about ready to lose your life, I ain't heard nobody ever say anything else than Jesus. And there are people of all different nationalities and races. Why? Wow, he's the only one alive. He's the only one coming back. That's why his name is used in vain. 
You notice you don't hear people say Muhammad, Buddha. Why? The devil's trying to get you away from that na name so he makes you use his name in vain so it doesn't, you don't understand the power of that name. You'll never see a movie called The Last Temptations of Muhammad. Them Arabs will go down there and burn your theater down. But wimpy Christians say, One man told me not long ago, I was jogging. He said, I heard y'all Christian turn the other cheek. He said, what would you do if I slap you right now? I said, well, I ain't preaching. I said, you want some of me? Leapfrog. Vampire God hit that small. Down he went. There you go. Come on, baby. Can you imagine what he's saying? I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. I don't know how to get out of here. I don't let people just slap me. Now, if I'm preaching the gospel, I've had them punch me. That's different. I'm being persecuted for Christ's sake. But you gonna come slap me? I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. I believe in healing. I'll get you healed. Jesus was the exact same way. He was no wimp. They said, we'll push you off this cliff. He said, get out of my face. Walked off. He said, I want to let you know, you know I can call more than 12 legions of angels take care of this situation? You know, if 12 legions of angels would have come, 20 billion, 400 million men and a bit of dust and a lick, one angel in the Bible knocked down 185,000 men, one whack. But he was not driven by power. He was superior to power. God is looking for people superior to power instead of driven by it. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. If he's the truth, you cannot be deceived. Now notice this here. Jesus is truth for he recovers man from his godless error. What does that mean? No intellectual activity, no induction or reason. No range of research can fill the chasm that's in the mind of man. See, I tried research and development. Who am I? Where did I come from, you know? What does Carl Sagan say about all these things? I tried that intellectual activity. I tried that range in research, but I still had a space. Where, who am I? Where did that come from? How, do, where am I going? Am I only in this life? Is this all it is? What, God? And I came back to God. God is alive and real. And I've taken on his philosophy. And if you want to know God's philosophy, it's Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was out form and void. And darkness upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord God moved upon the waters. And the Lord God said, notice he said something. He said, let there be light. Actually, what he said in the Hebrew was, light be. Now notice something. He didn't, he, he recorded the darkness. He did not say this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was out form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord God moved, the, moved upon the waters. And the Lord God said, boy, it's dark out here, huh? Huh? Oh. Say, it's dark out here, boy. He didn't say that. He recorded the darkness. He didn't deny the darkness. He recorded it. But he didn't say, boy, it's dark out here. He said, light me. So I've trained my mind to think like that. My Lord, if I walk into a room that doesn't have a light, I don't go, man, it's dark in here. I go, light me. Where's the switch? <laughs> it's just the same thing with healing in my body. Don't shout me down now. Let's get, let's get a little controversial. You sick. You hurting. Well, we don't deny that. But Jesus said, by his stripes you were healed. Yeah, I know. I know he said I was a word healed, but I am sick. Well, I understand that. But how do you get am sick to be changed to were healed? Well, let me tell you how. Most of us always preach this. We always preach in healing. We preach this, whose report shall you believe? And what report is that? Now faith is the subject of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. But the problem is we've never preached the second part of the verse in Isaiah. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To whom is the one? When did you get saved? When you had revealed knowledge of what salvation was. How do you get healing to happen immediately? You got to get a revelation of healing. Once you have a revelation of salvation, you ain't going back. You see, my problem, problem is we've always told people to believe in healing and believe faith to be healed, but we never preach the revelation of healing. The second part, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Or how do I get this am sick to were healed? 
Because let's face it, there are a lot of people who hadn't received healing. And they love God. That's not a lack of faith or an abundance of unbelief. It may be the person that laid hands on you. I've seen that happen in, in hospitals. I never go, go to hospitals because I travel all the time. But every once in a while, I'll go pray for somebody in the hospital. And there'll be people went, come down from the church, then they got a gallon of oil. Then they grease that woman up. She's slipping all over the sheets, boy. She, they sing praise. And, man, and, she, and my God, here I come walking. They go, oh, brother Jesse, we're so glad you came. Because if God don't do something, it look bad. Before they get out the room, the prayer is cracking. That woman's going to die. And God's going to get the blame for it. In my newest book, I got a second chapter. How did God get such a bad rap? Now, either this is true or it's not. Because the Bible said he is the truth. The other day in Hawaii, I opened up a book, opened up the uh, end table, and it said, the teachings of Buddha. I said, let's see what Buddha had to say. So I picked up that and I read a few. And, you know, I said, Buddha taught some truth, but Buddha isn't the truth. So he taught some truth, but he isn't the truth. There's a difference between being a truth and the truth. And I close with this. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. If he's the truth, he cannot be deceived. If he's the life, the devil can't kill you. Whoa. Now let's deal with that. Just for a minute. I've had many opportunities to die. I didn't take any. I've had many opportunities to fail. I didn't take any. That's not arrogance. That's not cockiness. I said, either this Bible is true or it's a lie. Why did everybody get mad when you say what this says? Why did anyone get mad at me when I say what this says? I don't deny sickness and disease. I don't deny challenges to your faith. I deny their right to exist because you have a destiny and a destination. You see, if you focus on your priority, you will eliminate all your confusion. See? But you gotta focus. You gotta focus. You gotta train yourself to think like God thinks. And buddy, that's tough. Because you're a natural person. Or you, 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 you're supernatural in the spirit, but you're in this natural body. It's not easy. There's been times, and, I, and I, Pastor Parson preaches a lot, like I do just preach till you drop, that I go up behind a pulpit and I see people and I go, oh, Lord, let them all go to hell. Let's go home, man. That's, I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. I, I don't want to do that. It's not easy. You're still flesh, you understand? Your spirit's willing, but flesh is weak. Spirit, man, I jump. I preach 52 times in the month of June. 52. I probably do more than that in the month of October. I got to be in a, in, a, in a TV station, I'm in a, a television studio tomorrow morning. Hello, this is Jesse Van from New Orleans, Louisiana, man, 9 o'clock. Then Idaho, Las Vegas, Tucson, here we go. Ba, 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 ba. Do you want to do all that? No. But what is the value of a soul? Let me tell you what's the greatest remedy of all your sickness. Sleep. How many times I said, Lord, I'm so tired. Will you, will you help me, Lord? He said, let me give you a, a word of wisdom. Sleep. <laughs> Sleep. But see, you know, my mind, like this. I'm sleeping. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Energize, immobilize, evangelize. Okay. Yeah. I'll, get, uh, I'll, say, I'll get me a little recorder. I'm sleeping right now, but when I wake up, I want to write this sermon. <laughs> I do that. The other day, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I had the television on. I fell off to sleep and I heard, Glory! Wow! I went, that's me. <laughs> Saw myself preaching. I, I watch myself preach all the time. I heard myself preaching on radio. I sent myself $100. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I said, that boy is worthy of support. Let me bless him real good. I sent myself $100. I flew Kathy to London to open up our offices in Europe. We have people who work for us in Europe in Bath, England. I was by myself. That never happens at my house. I'm never home, but, you know. But I was by myself. So I turned on the television. Now, I got a big television. I want to be big on television. I got that biggest television you've ever seen in your life. About the size of that thing. I want to be tall. I'm going to make myself tall. 
I got this monster television, you understand? One of them Mitsubishi big boys, huge. Biggest one they got, huge. People love to come watch television in my house, especially fights, boy. You ought to seen Mike bite Evander's ear. <laughs> you know, they need, he, need, he need to eat before he fight. He, he hungry. So, you know, you got all these cables and all that kind of stuff. I turn it on. I said, bless God, let's get some word, because I love flavor. Jesus is the life. The devil can't kill me. Bless God. Let's see what everybody's saying out there. I turned on that, and I heard a guy say, won't you help me? Won't you put that television by my face? Won't you help me? Won't you help me? Oh, God, if I don't hear from you today, we're going off the air. I said, you just went. Click. Mm -hmm. Usually when I see that, I go, Kathy, come here. We're going to get his time next week. He going off. He going off. Call that station. We're we going to get that time. Call that buyer. We want that time. So I meant click. I tell you what, if we don't hear from you today, we can't make it. Click. Oh, God. Somebody hold my arms up. Click. Oh, Lord. It's bad. Click. 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 I said, is there anybody? You wasn't on, Pastor. And, and I watch you. I like, I like, you know, I like the way he gets up and walks around that TV studio. Tell you one bless God. You know how Pastor Parker walks? Sometimes he kind of tell you what. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I go, yeah, that's good. I like that. I love that. Boy, get that look. You, he, 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 you know, you're in your chair at home going, I ain't moving. He can see me. He can see me. I couldn't find nobody. I said, I know who's preaching. So I went to my office and got five videos of myself. I stacked that baby glory that God got me some popcorn. Boy, and I'm hearing myself preaching. I'm shouting at myself. Yeah! Go ahead, boy! Kathy called me. She said, Jesse, what you doing? You ain't listening to yourself. Preach! I said, woman, you need to be a partner to this ministry. Did you know that? <laughs> she said, boy, you something. I said, I tell you what, man, I said, I tried everybody. I couldn't get a nobody. Man, I preach myself happy. <laughs> I do that. I think you need to. Because sometimes when you're behind a pulpit and the anointing God's coming out, you say things you didn't know you did. You, you, you just come out and they go, ooh, I, I need to get that myself. <laughs> the gospel is the doctrine of life. Union with Christ will stop the shock, sting, and disability of death. See, this union, you become one with him. He's the support and the supply. He's everything I need. There's two things you only need in God. There's two things that any person needs in the world. He needs a covenant with God and a covenant of God. That's all you need. Covenant with God. Find out what belongs to you and a covenant of God. You know, ladies and gentlemen, how do I say this? I don't ask the Lord for hardly anything. Why? Because he's already said yes. What? He's already said yes. The Bible says all the promises in him are yea. Now what promise are you believing for? You believe in the healing? Yeah, he's already said yes. You need financial help? Yeah, he, he's already said yes. He's already said yes. So if he's already said yes, like when you, your church called me and asked me to come, if I had a call back the next day, are you sure? Well, yeah, we already said yes. Call back the next day, are you really sure? We, we already said yes. Well, okay. Call back, are you sure? Well, you're deaf? Yeah. 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 I already said yes. But you got to know what he said yes to. It's called promises. Now, let me get real strong here. To you, it's promises. But to God, it's prophecies. When words fall from his lips, they are prophetic utterances. See, if you walk into somebody needs healing, you say, by his stripes you were healed. He'll say, boy, I'm standing on the word and I'm believing God for my healing. But if you change this way, thus saith the Lord thy God concerning thy body, by his stripes you are healed. What happens? Something changes. There's something stronger there. A prophetic utterance is coming and flowing out. Well, see, to you it's promises. To God it's prophecies. That's why he says, my word shall not return unto me void. I said, but Lord, 
And some things didn't work. He said, well, Jesse, it's very possible my word can return unto you void. I said, why? He said, you don't believe it like I do. He said, you got to get to the Apostle Paul. You got to quit believing and start knowing. I know in whom I have believed. It ain't easy because your intellectual mind going to fight you. Say, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. God didn't say deny it. He said, look not at the things which are seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary or subject to change. The things which are not seen are eternal. What's not seen? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now you got to get this in your ear gate, in your mouth gate, in your heart gate, back up into your ear gate, coming out of your mouth gate, flowing from your heart gate. It's got to constantly be flowing. Because if you're talking, you can't hear what the devil's saying. You don't command thoughts with thoughts. You command thoughts with words. Brother, I'll tell you something. And next time you cash your check, now tell it goes 20, 40. Do this. 85, 94, 63, she'll go. Why? Her mind had to shut up because they wanted to hear what your mouth was saying. You don't command thoughts with thoughts. You command thoughts with words. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. If he's the truth, you cannot be deceived. If he's the life, the devil can't kill you. If you don't worship God in your wilderness, you will never get to your promised land. There are wilderness, but there's a promised land. There is a promised land. Now, I say this and close my last closing, I promise. God's promises are spelled P-R-O-M-I-S-E. That's how you spell promise. But man gets a hold of it. Religion gets a hold of it. And they don't spell it P-R-O-M-I-S-E. They add something to it. C-O-M, P-R-O-M-I-S-E. All of a sudden, promise becomes compromise or dot com. And all of a sudden, instead of a promise, it's a compromise. It's not easy to live the way I'm talking. Because you give the devil an inch, he'll kill you. He'll hurt you. He's a serial killer. But this Jesus of mine is a serial savior. See, and when you understand that, then if he's the way, you can't get lost. If he's the truth, cannot be deceived. If he's the life, the devil can't kill you. The man put a 357 Magnum on my face and cocked the trigger. He said, if you say this, Jesus, one more time, I'll blow your brains out. On the streets of New Orleans on Mardi Gras, my body was going, Ooh. my body was freaking, man. But my spirit said, pull the trigger. My body went, no, no, no. We the one gonna die, you the one gonna live. Pull it. You commit it, pull it. He just looked at me. I bind you in Jesus' name. I line sweat running down the back of my legs. It, this is what he was doing. It wasn't the Holy Ghost. It was fear from my toes to my thighs. But my spirit was here. Pull it. You commit it, pull it. I'm sorry. I said, you sure are. <laughs> Almost made me use the bathroom of myself. <laughs> scared me. I ain't gonna lie, scared me. Some people won't tell you, I scared. But thank God my spirit took over. I said, you need to get saved. That was 13 years ago. He's a deacon today in the church. Went back to my house and said, Lord, come here. Don't never do that again. Don't do that again. 
preaching. I was preaching and I didn't know it. You know, sometimes you're going and spit's flying and you're preaching sweat flowing. Sometimes God make you say something, come out your mouth before you have time to think. And I said this, I looked and as I was preaching, I looked, I said, you lady, you're committing adultery with this man right here. The church did that. Woo! The pastor jumped up and went, come on, come on, come on, come on. He started start speaking in tongues. I freaked out, man. He said, what was you thinking, Brother Jesse? Rapture. Now. Now. She jumped to her feet. Her husband jumped up with her. The man and his wife jumped up. The pastor going, Ugh. I'm going, ah. We froze. I got quiet. It, it was about three seconds, but it seemed like eternity. And the lady said, it's the truth. And the pastor went, oh, thank God, it's the truth. <laughs> well, you thank God, the truth, man, my God. He didn't want me to miss it, but I didn't want to miss it neither. She said, we've been wife swapping for three years here. And all four of them came forward, gave their life to God. That was wonderful. I got back to the hotel. I said, I ain't doing this no more. You want to talk to somebody about their private sexual life? That's your business. Leave me out of it. I don't want to do this no more. But those gifts of the Spirit start operating, and that could happen today. <laughs> Look at some people. <laughs> oh, dude. no, Lord. Stand to your feet. It could. Pastor Parsley, if this is okay, and I ask you because I submit to your authority, you are so courteous and kind to us. You wonderful people have come out to see us. If it's all right, I like, I would not like to receive an offering from our ministry. I just came here to be a blessing to you. I, I just like to go home. If that's okay. I don't mean that to be rude because you all have been so courteous and kind to me. And I, people all over America told me this is a great giving church, and it is. But I was coming over in the plane, and the Lord said, Jesse, I said, what? He said, bless those people. It's okay. He said, you got more seed in the ground, boy. And that's really true. I'm totally debt-free. I don't owe a dime to nobody. Ministry-wise, personal-wise, God been good to Jesse. He been good to Jesse. Yeah. Ooh, been good to Jesse. Yeah. And if if that's okay, I I I just like to come and minister. It's not that, you know, who don't need money? Somebody need money because there's so many things to do. But the Spirit of God, if it's okay with you, I just like to be a blessing to you people. And I hope you enjoyed it. And all I ask you to do is pray for us. That's it. That's it. If you don't mind, just pray for us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Right. It's called the law of reciprocity. Last week I did the same thing. And the pastor said, oh, but Jesse, the offer was $22,497. And, and they gave it to me. And I'm not saying this arrogantly. I looked up and the Lord said, you see that man over there? Yeah, I said, who is that man? He said, his name is Larry. I said, Larry? He said, yes, sir. His name is Larry Mize, who's a, a, a missionary that builds hospitals in Mexico and things. Larry, I had never met him. But Dr. Lawrence Kennedy is the pastor of the North Church in Dallas. He, he knows this man very well. I said, uh, I think this is for you. He went, huh? I said, I, I believe this is for you. Then I told the people, it's my money. You gave it to me, didn't you? And they said, well, yeah. I, said, I can do what I want with it, can I? Yeah. I said, okay. I give it to you. Because I, I just don't come. I'm not a traditional man, as you can see. I knew you were going to laugh there for a minute. 
<laughs> I'm just the kind of man I am. I'll receive an offer when God tells me. And I won't when he doesn't tell me. And God has been good to us. I don't mean that. And I, and I, I don't charge churches. This little lady here told me, she said, oh, let us remember. I, nothing wrong with a church taking care of your hotel, your food, plane, whatever. We don't do any of that. We just pay for everything. We just want to be a blessing. And the reason why I do that, because there's nothing wrong with a church taking care of that. And I told the lady, and I'll tell you, and I felt led of the Lord to say it, because he told me at the end of the service he would receive an offering. Y'all heard him say it. I have a natural brother. His name's Wayne. He lives about 50 miles from me. And if I went over to his house tomorrow to see him, and I hadn't seen my brother in about six, eight months, I guess, I wouldn't give him a gas ticket when I walked through the house. I wouldn't say, Wayne, it cost me $5, come to you. <laughs> well, if I won't do that to my natural brother, I will never do that to my spiritual brother. I will never do that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. You understand? And, and, it, and it's not because I'm a nice man. It has nothing to do with it. It's the principle that I live by. I got a lot of seed in the ground. You're looking at a giver. <laughs> but you're looking at a person that knows how to harvest. You sowed it, you harvested. Brother Colton preached on that in January. Powerful. Come on. And that's just the way I do things. And I was coming over and the Spirit of God said, this church has given so much. It's time for somebody to come here and just bless them. So I'm your harvest. I'm your harvest. I'm your harvest. I, I just want to be a blessing to you. I tell you, if you was wanting to give an offering, give it to Breakthrough. Ah, put it in television. Get the gospel preached to the world, then we can get out of here. Jesus said, when the gospel is preached to the world, then shall it come. That's Matthew 24. He didn't say they have to receive it. He said they had to preach it. That's a witness. He didn't say they had to receive it. They said you had to preach it. So I tell you, bless your church and honor it. Bless the outreaches of evangelism in this church. Whatever they're doing, get behind it. Because all you're doing, you're helping me. You're helping you and you're helping all other ministries. Some people don't understand that, but that's how we live. And I came over and I just, the Lord said, just be a blessing. I take care of you, Jesse, and he always has, and he always will. So if you don't mind, if, is, that the, is that all right, Pastor? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot. I don't mean to do that, but I just, you've been too kind. Y'all you kind to me. You asked me to come, and I just thank you. I sure have enjoyed being here. But the Lord did tell me this, and I know it's a little late, and I know you've been going strong. There's healing in these hands. There's increase in this life. I don't mean that in an arrogant sense. It's on me. It is on me. And there are people here with heart trouble. And I know how to stop a bypass. It's by bypassing it. And I don't want no, don't come up here if you don't have this problem. But if you're having trouble with your heart, and the Lord told me there are four people here tonight, you hadn't told your family, but you had having chest pains pretty strong. I want you to get out of your seat and come up here. Don't come for any other reason, because that would, that would hinder the anointing of God. Some people want to get prayed for so bad, they just come up and, and they hurt the anointing and they stop it. And I want to pray for you. I'm going to lay hands on you. And I know it's late. If you just keep standing, come. Look at me, you are coming. Look at me, look at me. It's the last day we pray about this man. This ain't your praying day, this your receiving day. Do you hear me? 
I don't pray prayers to see where the words splatter. I get serious as I can be about this holy, wonderful Jesus. God will heal your body. I wouldn't lie to you, and neither would Jesus. My reputation don't mean nothing. I know in whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded. People pray with me. Head up, eyes open, pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, praise God. Come on, you're having heart trouble, quickly come. Keep praying. I am a New Testament evangelist. I know I am. I know I am. I it's never questioned. I've never questioned that calling. Lift your hands up. You're in the anointing of God. When I lay hands on your chest, when I lay hands on your head, the anointing of God will go into you and touch you and minister life to you and bless you and reach out to you in the name of Jesus. People pray with me right now quickly. Start down here. Everybody keep praying. Come on. Pray with me in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on, mister. This is your receiving day. This is your receiving day. Lift your hands up. Jesus. Jesus. This is my wife's hand. In the name of Jesus. Breathe on her. Breathe on her. Breathe on her. Breathe on her. Breathe on him. Breathe on him, Jesus. Breathe on her. Breathe on her. Breathe on her. Breathe on him. Breathe on her. Breathe on him. Breathe on him. Breathe on him. Touch her. Touch Lord Jesus. Heal her Jesus. Heal her Jesus. Lift your hands up. Heal her Jesus. Heal her Jesus. Heal her Jesus. Touch her. Touch. 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 Touch him Lord. Touch him. Touch Jesus. Touch, Lord. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Touch. Hallelujah. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Touch him, Lord. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Touch him, Jesus. Breathe on him. People, come on, pray with me. How do you feel? Hit that hit, huh? Bam! Did it? That, that's, that's healing power being released. So hold it down for just a second, please. There's a lady here. You have an issue. He says, speak in English. It's right here. This thing forms and it, and, it, and it oozes. It'll heal up, but it never heals up really completely. This is nothing to be embarrassed about, something to be delivered from. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Get out of your seat and come up here. You have this. I saw that. I saw that in my spirit. Lift your hands up, sweetheart. Get ready. Here it come. Whoa, Lord. Whoa, Kathy, put your hands right here on the knees. Oh, Jesus. Lord, touch, touch this thing in the name of Jesus that it'll be gone without a scar ever at all. People keep praying with me. Come on, keep praying with me. Ah, touch, Lord. Heal him, body. Heal him, Jesus. People keep praying with me. Keep praying with me. Hello, Hosa. Baby, no, no, so come on, yeah, they show for me.
you start disciplining your child and you're losing control. The devil wants you to hurt that child. And you scream inside, I don't want to do this. But you're being pushed by a spirit. You're not possessed, no. But that devil wants to hurt that child. And you start disciplining that child and you begin to lose your temper and you begin to hit harder and harder and harder. And it's happened to you when you were raised. And you said you'd never do it again, that you never would be like that, but you're turning out like that and you don't want to be because you are a good person. But Satan's trying to bring that generational thing back into you to your child because your child is a blessing from God. And he's trying to destroy the child through you. Get out of your seat and come up here. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Come on, girl. There's more than one. There's more than one. Come up here. I know the anointing. I know the voice of God. Come on. You're having this problem. You come. Oh, God knows what he's talking about. I know it. Alahara. Get him in this line, brother. You lose control when you discipline that child. That devil's trying to hurt that child. But I'll tell you what, you will be free from this. There's more, there's more. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I'm, I got to hurry here with this time. I know what I'm talking about. When I lay hands on you, you're going to be free from this. I'm telling you, you're going to be free from this. Put them in one line, gentlemen. Shoulder to shoulder. I want everybody praying. This is nothing to be embarrassed about. Don't you understand something about the devil? All he want to do is hurt people. These are good people. Good people. Hallelujah. Get this line quickly. We'll make a second line. We're starting down here. Touch it. Wow, Jesus. 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 Touch it. Touch the Lord God Almighty. Touch Jesus. Touch. Touch Lord. Touch Jesus. Touch Lord. Touch. 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 Touch Lord God Almighty. Touch Jesus. Makasa. Touch Lord. People come on, pray with me. Keep praying. Touch. Touch. Touch Jesus. Touch. Touch the baby. Touch. Jesus. Touch Lord. Come on, people, pray with me. Freedom. Freedom, Jesus. Freedom, Jesus. Freedom, Lord. Freedom, Jesus. Come on, people, lift your hands up. Bless the Lord. Freedom, Jesus. Freedom, Jesus. Come on, people, lift your hands up. Bless the Lord. Come on, Touch God Almighty! Touch Him, Jesus! People, come on, pray with me. Come on, the anointing of God is here. Touch Him, Jesus! Touch Him, Jesus! Touch Him, Jesus! Help this lady today! 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 Touch! Touch! Touch it, Jesus! Touch it, Jesus! Touch it, Lord! Touch Jesus! Jesus! Touch! Touch, Lord! Come on, people, pray with me! In the name of Jesus, in whom I serve, devil, I bind you. I loose you in the name of Jesus. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet and all parts in between. In the name of Jesus, 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just receive that, Mama. Just receive that. Receive that. Receive that. Come on, people, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Oh Lord, this is hard. Listen to me. When God gives me things, they get very specific. You're this close to losing your marriage. You're looking at another woman. You're looking at another man. This devil's pulling you little by little. You really don't want to do this. But the accuser of the brethren has come. He spoke in your ears. He spoke in your husband's ears. You, sir, are looking at that secretary and you shouldn't be looking at her like that. The trap is set. He's out to destroy you and your family. You want to get serious with God. The devil don't care about your family. He want to hurt you. And in your mind, you have all reason to believe that junk. But it's a lie. And you're being noticed. And he hadn't noticed you like that. And she hadn't noticed you like that. Get out of your seat and come up here. Get out of your seat and come up here. I said get out of your seat and come up here. Now. Come on. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Something to be delivered from. Get out of your seat and come up here. Come on, there's more. There's more. I know what I'm talking about. Come on. I hate that devil with a passion. I'm tired of him ruining people's lives. Come on. Be honest with yourself. Come on. I know what I'm talking about. I'm telling the Holy Spirit's in this place. People wouldn't walk up here with this kind of stuff unless they're serious about this. This is serious business. Come on. Come on, I know what I'm talking about. Man, how does the Lord talk to you about Jesse? I can hear him with this physical ear. I don't know. It, I can, he said, Jesse, I can hear like you hear me. Jesse. I don't know why he does it that way. That's just what happens to me. Come on, get in this line. People pray with me. There's someone in this section who said, God wouldn't do that. That's embarrassing. The Lord just told me to tell you, you can go home. And he said, Tell me, tell you, bless God, he can do anything he wants. He created this earth. And he's trying to save people's lives. And you got a the gall and audacity to question something God wants done. God wants to save people's lives, save their marriages, save their family, save their children. Lift your hands up. Look at me, all of you. Look at me. When I lay hands on you, it'll be released from you. You'll feel it like this. Huh. Because it's that devil trying to do that. It's going to go, huh? It's called honesty here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, people. Pray with me. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Sing. Freedom! Freedom, Lord! Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom, Lord! Freedom for this person! Freedom! Freedom, Lord! Freedom! 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 Freedom, Jesus! Freedom, Lord! Freedom! 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 Freedom, Jesus! Freedom! 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 Freedom, Jesus!
Everybody get quiet. Girl, God took 70 parts of Moses' spirit and put it on 70 elders and he still had enough left to whip the devil. And the Lord said, stop here. I seen her from the womb. She's special to me. And Satan's vying hard for her. And sometimes you smile on the outside, but you're not smiling on the inside. Baby nosh on you. And there's great pain on the inside. But the Lord told me to tell you this. When I touch your face, he's going to take a portion of my spirit and a portion of my joy, ma'am. And you get ready to act different because you're going to get it acting different. Because it's the strength of God. Jesus! Jesus! People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Jesus, touch it. Touch, Lord. God, touch, Lord. Touch, Jesus. People, come on, lift your hands up and shout that a God. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Help her today, Jesus. Help her today, Jesus. Help her today. Jesus. Touch him. Touch him, Lord. Help. Man, I, I'm trying to quit. My God, I didn't mean to go over time. I don't want to be a homosexual. But these things pull on me. You are not a homosexual. But the devil's trying to pull you in that manner. You've been assigned a spirit by the devil himself to get you over into that realm. And the reason why you're not, because you're fighting this and you, you're disturbed, but you don't know what to do. Because all of a sudden you find yourself being attracted or attracted to someone of the same sex. And you go, no, no but it seems like it becomes overwhelming. Notice at times it's a lot stronger than other. Why? Because that spirit is doing all he can to bind you. Get out of your seat and come up here. Get out of your seat and come up here. Be honest. Come on. Come on. There's more. Come on, there's more. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Something to be delivered from. Come on, come on, mister. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, lady. Get up here, lady. Come on, come on. Oh. working in here. Look at me, all of you. I see it in the spirit. The devil on your shoulders just push you. Make you lose your self-esteem. Don't think much of yourself. Always been told what you couldn't do. That you never would amount to anything. That you're not this and you're not that. Always condemning. Constant, constant, constant. Jesus loves every one of you. That dog saw it. Yeah, the Lord. Thank you. Th the Lord told me something. I thought it was very wonderful. He said, I'm going to change your mind that when Satan tries to inject, I will put such pure thoughts in your mind it'll override that and swallow it. Just like that. Slam it, knock it down. Are you ready? Stretch forth your hand to these people, lift your hands up. Let Jesus be the Lord of you. Let me have one of those things. God. 
Come on, people, pray with me. Come on. Jesus! Touch God! Touch Lord! Touch! Touch! Freedom! 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 Freedom, Jesus! Freedom! Freedom, Jesus! Freedom, Lord! Come on, girl. Come on. It's your day. Breathe on her, Jesus! Breathe on her, Jesus! Breathe on her, Jesus! Breathe on her! Breathe! Breathe on her! 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 Breathe on him, Jesus! Breathe on him, Lord! Touch him, God! Touch Jesus! I saw what happened when you was a little girl. Seen things back there that will be forgotten for life. Father, in the name of the Lord.